One of the more annoying things about the modern left is the constant insistence on speaking on others' behalf, usually in some grandstanding virtue signaling fashion. Oh, I'm here to protect immigrants, or I'm here to protect gay people, or I'm here to protect Muslims. The list goes on. This pathological minority coddling gets quickly exposed, however, whenever one of these prized pawns dares to deviate from the confines of acceptable opinion. If you don't get in line, you're an Uncle Tom, or you're a race traitor, and you're to be dismissed missed for not thinking what your immutable characteristics dictate you should think. We saw a horrendous example of this earlier in the summer, when Portland ICE protesters screamed the N-word at a black officer for supposedly betraying his race. <laughs> It goes to show that protecting minorities isn't actually at the center of their worldview. It's just a front to advance their politics first and foremost. Minorities and women who dare challenge the progressive dogma get tossed under the progressive bus often on the harshest of terms, sometimes on violent terms. And the latest example out of Toronto is one of the worst cases I've seen recently. On Sunday, some 77 anti-abortion protesters were demonstrating on a Toronto street corner as part of an annual event called Life Chain. According to reports, for most of the event, there was only one pro-choice counter-protester present, silently holding up a sign without conflict. About halfway through the event, a local hairdresser named Jordan Hunt arrived on the scene. The victim says he started drawing on the abortion protest group's signs, so she shouted to her group to protect the signs. And at that point, the man, if that is indeed how he identifies, started scribbling on people's backs with his markers. At this point, the victim started recording the incident with her phone, and it's a good thing she did. It's a key piece of evidence in what will hopefully be a forthcoming legal case. Destruction somebody, of private property. It's against the law. Somebody gets raped by somebody and they're like, I'm a 16 year old and I can't have this baby. Think you should keep it? It's a baby. Yeah. If someone was raped and she gave birth and she decided to kill her three-year-old child. Yeah, that right there, that's the face you make right before you give her the old roundhouse kick of respect. I meant to kick your phone. How does that matter? Oh, I wasn't trying to hit you. I was only trying to damage your property as though that makes it any better. It's still physical attack on the basis of intellectual disagreement. Reports are that police officers arrived on the scene in about 10 minutes, but Mr. Hunt had already fled. The victim says the police seemed reluctant to help her, implying they couldn't do anything about it. But a police spokesperson says there is an ongoing investigation. It's not yet clear if charges will be filed or not. The salon at which Hunt worked has since severed ties with him, saying that they believe everyone has the right to voice an opinion without fear of physical violence. Which is a real shame if you're in Toronto and you're looking to get a hairstyle that says, I'm the Conor McGregor of respecting women. Say no more, fam. Reporters have reached out to Hunt for comment, hearing nothing back yet, and there is a Twitter account claiming to be his, but I honestly can't tell if it's legit or not. I'm 50-50 on whether I believe this account to be genuine or just some opportunistic troll, because it perfectly strikes that balance between saying insane things and not making them fully unbelievable. Although in the context of a guy who reenacts the Jordan tongue right before kicking a woman to defend women, the threshold for insanity in terms of what's believable is obviously pretty high. He says he won't apologize for defending a woman's right to choose, even to a woman. He says he won't apologize to the victim because she's a woman hater. He goes as far as to compare himself to MLK, Gandhi, and Susan B. Anthony. And this is where my eyebrow starts to raise for potential troll activity, but at least it prompted some good memeing in response. It's possible this account is real. It does have a history of progressive-themed tweets dating back about a month before this incident occurred, but a person can change his Twitter handle and his profile picture on a moment's notice, and there are a few things about this account that give me caution. First, immediately after this roundhouse kick story was published, this account became a little more extreme in its perspective. Beforehand, he was saying people need to chill out about Kavanaugh because it's all speculation. After the kick story was published, now he's saying Kavanaugh is for sure a rapist because all the evidence says so. That, to me, looks like an account that's suddenly very interested in fanning some flames. Also, this account tweets pretty much exclusively about American politics. It's not that Canadians can't or don't have opinions about Trump, but if he was this politically passionate and living in Toronto, I'd expect to see at least a few opinions about Canadian life in the mix. But I don't know, it could conceivably be real, too. We'll have to wait and see. It could be that this guy genuinely believes he's defending women by kicking women and also stealing their hoodies when they're not looking.
Regardless of the Twitter account, the behavior in the video is exactly the sort of thing I'm talking about. His care for women only goes as far as they agree with his ideology. I'm here to defend a woman's right to choose. Unless she chooses life, then she gets my virtue boot to her face. It's not about protecting minorities or the vulnerable or anything of the sort. It's about using them as a club or a shield or any other weapon in the ongoing game of agree with me or else. Agree with me or I'll smear you as a bigot. It. Agree with me or I'll try to get you fired. Agree with me or face violent attack. Protecting and promoting the ideology is the primary objective. All claims otherwise are secondary conveniences. The most fundamental freedom we have is the freedom to our own thoughts and to express them. The most fundamental right you can deny a person is the freedom to theirs. So be skeptical of these people who claim to speak on others' behalf, claim to represent them, claim to stand up for them, yet refuse refuse to allow them the most basic freedom of all. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. Or maybe wolves in ewes' clothing. Or maybe just chicks in chicks' clothing. You get the point. Don't trust them. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below, and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.